Hello, Fabric community. I am Savine Reddy, Director of Community and Learning for Microsoft Fabric, and this is the April edition of the Fabric Monthly Update. In this video, I am just covering the highlights, so if you want the details, check out the update blog. The link is in the video description. Now let's get started. For reporting, we have a new visual for you, the 100% stacked area chart. It is exactly what its name says. It displays the relative percentage of multiple data series as stacked areas, where the totals always equal 100%. We are also introducing more control over line charts. You can configure the transparency, there are additional options for smoothing lines, and for step lines. There are situations where you want a PowerPoint presentation to continuously play the same slides over and over. And if you're using the Power BI add-in in these scenarios, you can now configure the add-in to automatically pull fresh data from Power BI while the presentation is showing in slideshow mode. Here is a nice convenience for you when you use the Power BI add-in in an empty slide. Empty slide means one that does not have a title. The Power BI add-in will offer to help fill in the slide title based on the content that's being shown by the add-in. For example, the title of the slide can be set to the report name, the page name, or the visual name. We've added a new drop-down menu to the footer of the Power BI add-in. And directly from that drop-down menu, you can decide whether you want to see live data or a snapshot. If you want snapshots, you have two options, snapshot and public snapshot. With the snapshot option, only those people who have permission to view the report in Power BI will be able to see the snapshot. With the public snapshot option, then anyone who can view the presentation can also view the snapshot. For those of you who have been using the dynamic subscriptions for paginated reports, previously there was a limit of 50 recipients. But now you can have up to 1,000 recipients. Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you the new and improved image mode feature in the Power BI add-in for PowerPoint. This feature introduces an easier experience and improved functionality for freezing Power BI content as images. Here is my PowerPoint presentation, and this is the slide where I want to insert a Power BI data. First, select the Power BI add-in. Then, I go to Power BI and get a link to the visual I want to add to the slide. As always, once added, the visual is live and interactive. In this update, there is a new drop-down option below the report name that controls the way the data is shown. When I click on the drop-down, you can see three options. Live data. This is the default state, and it means that the add-in is connected to Power BI and shows the recent data, and that the content is interactive. Snapshot means that the add-in shows an image of the data, but only users with access to the report in Power BI will be able to view that image. When a user who does not have access to the report tries to view the add-in, they will see a message telling them to request access in order to view the content. And public snapshot. In this case, everyone who has access to the presentation can see the image, regardless of their access to the report. I will select public snapshot. Now, the content in the add-in is actually an image, and when I click on it, it tells me that I cannot interact with it. But the footer stays interactive, so I can get more data about the report, name, and add border to beautify my slide. One of the benefits of this new feature is that when, I op when opening an existing presentation with Power BI add-in, the slide thumbnail will no longer show the data by default. It will show the data only after a check if the viewing user is allowed to see the data. Let's see how it looks like. I will open the same presentation I was editing earlier. You can see that by default, the slide thumbnail in the left do not show any data. The image will only show up when the user views the slide and after a permission check. For slides that were created before this feature update, PowerPoint will show the add-in thumbnail only the first time you open the presentation after getting this update. Afterwards, it will not show the thumbnail anymore before checking if the user can view it. 
This new feature is supported from Office version 23.12. Make sure to run Office Update to get the most up-to-date bits. Thank you for joining me today to learn about the improved image mode feature in the Power BI at Info PowerPoint. We hope this feature will enhance your presentations and make it easier to share your data and insights with others. Power BI mobile apps now support folders in workspaces. Just remember, these folders can contain a variety of fabric items. Some of them are related to Power BI and some of these items are not. And so these mobile apps will only show you the items that are Power BI items. If a report has a barcode field, you can use a phone camera to scan the barcode on some object, and then that will cause the report to filter based on that barcode. This is really useful, for example, in retail scenarios, because you can be looking at some object, and then you can find all the information about it pretty easily in the Power BI report. Things like inventory information or sales data, etc. Some of you have been using this feature, but you told us that you wanted it to be a little easier to clear out that barcode filter. Well now, in the report footer, we've added a button so that with just one click, you can clear out a previously scanned barcode and remove it from the filter. Using a Power BI mobile app, it's now possible for you to see a Power BI item in full screen. This is supported for both launch items and when using a universal link. For those of you not familiar with a launch item, this is a Power BI item, like a report or a page, etc., that a user selects to automatically open when the app opens. And so now, you can tell the Power BI mobile app to open this item in full screen mode. In this update, we added clear barcode, a feature designed to streamline the process of filtering reports based on semantic models featuring a barcode field. Did you know that when a field in a semantic model is marked as a barcode, you can use your mobile device to filter your report by scanning barcodes in your camera. To add a barcode field to your model, simply mark the field with the barcode tag in Power BI Desktop. This feature is especially great for retail. For this demo, I want to open a report that is used to manage the inventory in a bicycle shop named AdventureWorks. I will start by scanning the barcode of a product in the store. When scanning the barcode in the Power BI scanner, I get a list of all of my reports that contain a barcode field. The report I am looking for is named AdventureWorks Inventory. Opening the report, we see the bike shop inventory. The inventory is currently filtered by the product barcode I scanned. Notice that the barcode icon in the report footer is filled indicating that a barcode filter is currently applied. From here, I can scan a new barcode using the barcode button inside the report. It's important to mention that if you are scanning multiple barcodes one after the other, when scanning the new barcode, the previous one is cleared automatically. But what if we want to clear the barcode filter? In this release, we added the new clear barcode button to the report footer to make it easier for you to clear the filtered value in a single tap. After I press the clear barcode, we can see the unfiltered inventory in the report. Now I can use a filter, a slicer, or another barcode to filter my report by product. And just like we do every month, here are many great new visualizations and visuals available in AppSource. Organizations that use the cloud not only have to keep up with more and more data, they also have to do that while protecting sensitive information. So this month, we announced the public preview of Azure Private Link for Microsoft Fabric. Private links enable secure connectivity to Fabric by restricting access to your Fabric tenant from an Azure VNet of your choice and blocking all public access. This ensures that only traffic from your VNet is allowed to access Fabric experiences like notebooks, lake houses, and warehouses in your tenant. This month, we also released the preview of managed private endpoints for Fabric. This lets you secure connections to data sources that are behind a firewall or not accessible from the public internet. So you can access these data sources without exposing them to the public network or requiring complex network configurations. Hi everyone. I'm very happy to show you a quick demo on tenant level private link for accessing Fabric. This enhanced the networking feature, 
provide secure access to your sensitive data. You can also restrict the traffic for internet and only route through private link. In today's example, I will show you connection to a warehouse through SQL Management Studio and also one link access through Storage Explorer. This is my virtual machine, and this virtual machine is in a virtual network, which I have the private endpoint set up to Fabric. Now let's try to access the virtual machine using Bastion. In this virtual machine, I can access to this tenant. And in the tenant setting, I already enabled private link and also blocking public access. If I do NS lookup to fabric.microsoft.com, it returns to private IP. Here is my workspace. In this workspace, I have a warehouse created. We can get the SQL connection string here and I try to access in SQL Manager Studio. I can connect fine. Next, I want to show you the one lake access. This is my lake house and I have a table here. If I look at the property, we can see the URL. Let's grab that and try to access in Storage Explorer. We can see our tables here. This tenant has blocking public access turned on. So if I try to access outside of the virtual machine, you can see we are blocked. Let's try to access through the local machine. I received error message saying while private link are enabled, I cannot connect from this IP address. When I try to access this one link in my local storage explorer, I received an error message saying request denied because public access is disabled and there is no data available. This is what I want to show today. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the feature. This month, we integrated Git with the Data Warehouse. This allows you to check in the changes to your warehouse into an Azure DevOps Git repository as a SQL database project. The copy into statement is used to import data, and this month, we've made additional enhancements so that it is faster at loading lots of small CSV files. When querying data in the Lakehouse, the SQL Analytics endpoint makes use of partition elimination, also called partition pruning. This means that it only reads the data from the partitions that are relevant to the query. We've made some additional performance improvements here. In those cases where there are a small number of partitions in a table that has many files. Mirroring in Fabric is now in public preview. This is a low cost and low latency solution that lets you create replicas of your Azure SQL DB, Snowflake, or Cosmos DB data in one link which can then be used for your analytics. If you're developing in Spark and you use those starter pools that have a single node configuration, you probably want those Spark sessions to start faster. So we've got something you're going to like. You can now set your starter pool to max one node. This gives you a super fast session start time. The system allocates the driver and executor with four cores each and 56 gigabytes of memory so that they fit within a single medium node configuration for starter pools. In these configurations, it gives you start times of about five seconds. We always want to simplify the development process for the Synapse VS Code extension. So this month, we released a container image that has all the necessary dependencies for that extension. You can get this image from the Microsoft Artifact repository, and it can be pulled with a single command. And with this image, you don't need to install Java, Miniconda, or any other tool on your local machine. And this also lets you work with your Synapse projects within the container environment 
which is isolated and consistent. Git is now integrated with Spark job definition artifacts, so you can check in the changes of your Spark job definitions into a Git repository. This includes the source code of the Spark jobs and other artifact properties. We've improved the Object Explorer in Fabric Notebooks. You'll find it easier to navigate and discover data sources and resource folders. If you are familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, you might have used the Run Magic. And now, the Run Magic is available in Fabric Notebooks. This lets you run your Python scripts and SQL scripts that are located in a Notebook Resources folder. Semantic Link is now generally available, and the package for it comes with our default VHD. So, you can use Semantic Link in Fabric right away, without having to pip install any additional modules. In December, we introduced a feature that allows tenant admins to enable AI and Copilot in Fabric for certain security groups or the entire organization. Building upon that, you can now enable AI and Copilot for a specific capacity. This lets you test Copilot on a certain capacity without impacting other workloads. This also allows you to better adapt Copilot to meet the needs of different groups within your organization. AI and Copilot in Fabric is only available in a limited number of data centers. Previously, users who are not in the US or France had to turn on the cross-geo setting in order to use AI and Copilot. But now we've made things much simpler. Now, all EU customers can use AI and Copilot without turning on the cross-geo setting. And their AI and Copilot requests will be processed within EUDB. Whether you're a beginner or an expert in KQL, you will love the new data profile feature. It provides quick access to schema details and column statistics and will help you write better and more efficient queries. The new KQL query set command bar has been improved to help you distinguish between actions that apply at the level of a query set or actions that apply to a single query. And we've added a new secondary command bar within the query editor dedicated to hosting query level actions, this should help make your querying experience easier and smoother. The update command is now in public preview. This allows you to update existing records in a Custo table. This is really useful for fixing ad hoc data issues and it can be leveraged in a data loading pipeline. And check out the update command's what if mode. It will let you try the command before running it on your data. Kusto Copilot is in private preview. This Copilot translates your natural language questions into KQL queries. And this Copilot will help with data that's in KQL databases in Fabric and also with data that's in a standalone Kusto cluster. For Fabric event stream, you can now pause and resume the data streams. You may have heard that Microsoft recently announced the Database Watcher for Azure SQL. This gives you the power to have some really advanced monitoring. And now we are previewing Fabric integration with Database Watcher for Azure SQL. You can stream, store, and analyze monitoring data in real time using an event house database in Fabric real-time analytics. Data flows help with ingesting and transforming data. The introduction of data flow scale out with SQL DW Compute means you can transform data at scale However, to do this at scale, you still need to ingest that data. With the introduction of fast copy, you can ingest terabytes of data with the easy experience of data flows, but also with the scalable backend of a pipeline copy activity. Last year, we added support for service principles, SPNs, for authentication. And now, you can use SPNs for on-premises data gateways and VNet data gateways. And this month, we're introducing over 10 new or updated certified connectors. That's all for this month. Please visit our Fabric Community forums at aka.ms slash Fabric Community. It's the best place for you to connect with others and get answers to your questions. And please, tell us how we can do better. We are listening. Like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.